In this video, you will learn how to send emails with Brevo email marketing platform by using a template or starting from scratch. And at the end, I'll teach you how to authenticate your domain name for better email deliverability because without this, there's a risk your emails end up in the spam folder. So it's really important we set this up. Hello, internet people. My name is Robert and I help creators with the tech side of their business. This video is the second of a three part series where you'll learn everything about Brevo as an email marketing platform. Brevo is also the sponsor of this video. If you don't have an account yet, then sign up with Brevo by using my link, uh, which you can find in the video description, and you will save 50% on Brevo starter and business plans for the first three months uh, if you take the annual subscription. So let me show you how the email builder works. Campaigns just mean one of emails. So if you, uh, these are your weekly emails, your monthly emails, whatever is your frequency, this is where you send them out. And then if you need to have automations, so for example, based on the, you, uh, you know, certain action that the subscriber did, then only send an email. Then you need to use automations to achieve that. So let's just send out our first email by creating a campaign. You have a few options in Brevo. You can send out emails, SMS, WhatsApp, or web pushes. And these are a little banner that comes out here uh, from your browser when you're uh, navigating your website. We're, we're actually doing email. So let's do that. Then you can choose if it's a regular email or A, B test. And the way they explain it, uh, the test group will receive either version A or B. The versions with the best engagement will send to your remaining recipients. So the way it usually works is they send out, let's say you have a thousand subscribers, 15% of those people will receive a ver variation A and then 15% uh, variation B. For example, you could have different subject lines for both. It runs for like a few hours. And then based on uh, the engagement, it will send out the, the winner to the rest of the subscribers. But this is something you need to upgrade. And if you're starting out and you have less than a thousand subscribers, then I wouldn't bother with this because you just don't have enough data to make it uh, work in terms of data. Okay, let's give it a campaign name. And this is just something you will see. So let's uh, add it, then create a campaign. No, <laughs> this is strange. There's some warning here, but uh, don't worry. Uh, this is just because we haven't authenticated our domain. So uh, let's go through the other steps and I'm going to show you how to do that in, in just a few minutes. So let's start with adding recipients. So in this case, we're just going to send it to specific list. So in my case, I only have one list here or at least one active list. So I'm going to select that one and we're going to send that. That's where we're going to send it. We could also say do not send to unengaged contacts, but right now we don't have anything. So uh, we don't need that. In some cases, you don't want to send out this to certain people or people in a list or uh, with certain tag. For example, you could exclude people that already bought your course uh, because you are just sending out a promotional right now. So you don't want to uh, spam people with something they already bought. So, so that's that. And let's save this. And then we're going to add subject and subject line. I'm just going to paste this one here. And then you have the preview text and preview text is this text underneath here. So let's add that. Yep, that looks good. The only thing I want to mention here, if at any point you want to add the person's name, for example, the first name, you can click on this add variable and from here, contact variable and first name. So now it would say, you know, five tips for being natural on camera, Robert. So let's say that's the person's name, then that's what they would say. Now that doesn't make sense. So we could say something. Okay, Robert, here's five tips, five tips for being natural on camera. And this makes more sense. So let's keep it that way. And then also you can add emojis or use AI to help you with the subject line. Okay, let's click on save and then let's uh, st uh, start designing our email. And this is the cool part. There's a lot of different templates you can use for emails. Uh, they have these layouts. So these are the simple layouts. You can then swap the images and just have your text. Then you have this template gallery where it's really much more pretty and if you want to have something more visual, this is where you would find those emails. You can see really nice ones. And then you have also your templates. These are uh, the default templates they uh, provide you already. Then you have campaigns. Uh, we haven't sent out anything, but once we do, we will see them here and you can code your own. Personally, I like to use templates. It just saves me a lot of time. I set it up once and then after I use the same, uh, same template to create, send out all my emails. Okay, let's start with uh, layouts and I'm just going to go with something simple and start for, from scratch. And by the way, if you want a preview, you just click on this preview and you can see how the email looks like. Let's click on uh, this one, use template. The email builder is quite similar to what we saw in the form builder. Uh, here you have the blocks, you can just drag them here. You have text, oh actually sorry, that's title. You have also text here so I can add it. 
Uh, we have image here. If you need, we can add it. Uh, and it's again, uh, drag and drop. And if I want to delete, there's the delete button there. So I prepared already some text and this is how my text looks like. You see, I have a video here in between, but uh, I would like that video to show up properly. So it's an image. There's a nice thumbnail and every, everything like that. So how do I actually achieve that? Well, uh, I need to come here and I need to add a video from here. So I add here underneath. And now if I select this one, let's just grab this URL. So I select this one. I can add my video URL here. Now it'll start grabbing the thumbnail from the video. And here are all the settings we can do. We have things with layouts, spacing, border and content visibility. So this is really looking good. Uh, I'm going to keep it, but notice how the text doesn't make sense now. So I'm just going to remove some of the text like this, watch the video below. And then I need another uh, text here, text element here. I'm going to drag it here and add the rest of the text here. Okay. It's looking already much better. Uh, this title, I actually don't need it in this way. I'm going to delete it because you can also achieve the same thing uh, by coming here and let's say title one, and then you select this from here. You can select the heading one, for example, and then that becomes the heading. And so it's nicely in line. Now that makes no sense in this email, but what I want to show you is when you see this one, you can also add variables from here. So if I click on this one, I can now say, okay, uh, let's select the contact attributes and first name. So now it's going to display the first name or if the system doesn't know the first name, what should it show instead? We could say something like friend or in many cases, I would just leave it empty like this. So then I can say, then I would uh, have something like this. Hi, Robert. I find that looking and feeling good, blah, blah, blah. So basically this will be uh, replaced by the name. It just makes it a bit more personal that way. So if we click on this one, we can adjust the uh, text settings here. We have things like text alignment, line height, background, layout, spacing, and so on. But what about fonts and stuff? You have fonts here, but actually it's easier if you just come here in style. And before clicking on the setup brand, so you come here and click on these three dots and click on save. Okay, now there's a save and we can click on this setup brand. The cool thing is that Brevo is able to set this up automatically. So just add your website's URL here. However, if you don't have a website, you can also set that manually. So let's try the uh, automatic way. Let's fetch the brand. Okay, so you can see it recognized my logo, my colors from my website, uh, the fonts. Well, the links, I don't have anything to social. So import brand assets. Okay, cool. This is what it's uh, suggesting. And headings, it for some reason didn't uh, recognize anything. So uh, let's add uh, the Open Sans is not a basic uh, basic font that you have. So I need to add it from here, add web fonts. And now I can ser search for open science. Here it is and add selected fonts. And now I can uh, choose it from here, web fonts, open science, and now web fonts, open science. Great. And I could add now my YouTube channel from here or my socials. So YouTube and select from here add a list to list. And now I just need the URL like that. And you can see there's a little icon here, but now this doesn't show up unless you bring that element to the email. Okay. I'm happy with this. Let's save the brand. Continue editing. Now you'll notice as soon as I come here, my font has already changed. So if I look at it, open science and this way it's nicely styled. And now anytime, anytime I create a new email, it will always use the same styles. So for example, just to show you, let's add a button. Let's add it here. You see it's green by default already. Let's add a bit of one around the corner and you see, there you go. You can uh, now use a button here. Okay, let's remove this. I don't need it. Okay, one thing I wanna mention, you also have sections here. These are like pre-made sections that you can just drag and drop. So for example, if you like anything here, uh, let's say you have a quote from your course, you can just drag it here and it appears like this and you can modify it, but the styling is already there and it's working nicely. So just makes the process of building emails much faster. Okay, don't need it. Let's delete this part. And then if you at some point wanna save some sections, let's say I like this section, I can click on it. Oh, actually I need to click on the whole section. Uh, on this section, you see it selects all of them. And then I have option here to save to for reuse. But notice how it's the big one. So you would need to create these sections uh, separately. From here, you could uh, save it. We can give it a name, something like that, email with video. So now in the saved section, you can always just drag this, change the video, change the text, and you always have the same format. 
And just quickly, uh, you have also in the style, you have the brand now, you have templates, so you can adjust the background color, uh, the width of the text right now at 600, we can make it bigger or smaller. So if I adjust it, this will go smaller. If I make it bigger, it will expand like that. But the 600 actually looks pretty good. Then uh, you also have text appearance. We already adjusted that through brands and you have buttons in, in case you wanna adjust that uh, when you add buttons. All right, let's say we're happy with this email and now we're ready to go to the next step. <laughs> we need to click on save and quit. It, it sounds very dramatic and quit sounds like you're leaving this whole thing, but it actually goes to the next step. From here, you also have additional settings. These ones, uh, the important ones are activate Google Analytics tracking. And actually you can activate this from settings. So it's enabled there by default. This is just if you're sending people to your website, it adds automatically these UTM parameters so that you can uh, see from which email uh, people are coming to your website, maybe purchasing uh, your courses or your, your uh, products from your website. So it just gives you a bit more details in Google Analytics 4. And the other one, in some cases, you will want to use uh, tags. So for example, this tag specifically, if is for this email. So if you send out this email and uh, this is specifically maybe a sales email, then you can tag that uh, this subscriber has already received a sales email. And based on that, you can do uh, automations, for example. The rest of the settings you can check out. Uh, I think those two were the most important ones. Hey, if you're trying to write an email, but you end up staring at the blank page, having no idea what to write about, then check out my free email template where I've created a few starting points for an email newsletter. Uh, these templates give you a format that's proven to perform online. And all you have to do is just fill in the blanks so you can grab it. It'll be a link in the description. Next, I'll teach you how to authenticate your domain. This is extremely important to do before you start sending emails to your subscribers because it improves email deliverability and ensures your emails reach your subscribers' inbox instead of the, uh, ending up in the spam. If you have an email with Gmail, Yahoo, or any other free email providers, you cannot authenticate your domain. For this, you need to purchase your own domain name uh, they cost from three to $10 per year. And I, I recommend Namecheap as the domain registrar. They've been really solid for me. In any case, you should get your own domain name because it just looks so much more professional when the emails come from your domain instead of Gmail or Yahoo. And personally, I don't even uh, open business inquiry emails that come from Gmail. It just shows the person is not very serious about their business. So why should I take them seriously? And then we come to the sender. So let's go and take a look what we have here. Manage sender. Okay, let's do the authentication. You need to click on this link here. Or uh, if you don't see this link, you just go to campaigns and you have here settings. And you have here your sender and domains and click on configure. For this tutorial, I'm actually going to configure this email here. So in here, let's click on domains. And now I need to authenticate this uh, domain. So let's click on authenticate. And the cool thing is Brevo has the automatic tool that will kind of do it for you. Uh, as long as you're using one of the bigger uh, domain name registrars like uh, GoDaddy, Namecheap, or any of the bigger ones, this will work directly. But you can also do it manually if you need to. Let's click on continue. And all you need to do is actually just sign up to your domain registrar. Let's click on continue. And it automatically detects in where is my domain name registered right now. So let me log in. Okay, let me add the, I added the details and now it's authenticating. And this might take a few minutes as you can see here. Okay, your domain has been authenticated. Uh, to com the complete authentication might take 48 hours, but in most cases it's, uh, five to 10 minutes and then it should work. So uh, let's close this and you can see authenticated uh, and you can from here view the configuration how it's, uh, if you wanna do it manually also. All right, let's go back to campaigns, which actually is here. I'm gonna refresh this and go manage sender and choose the other one that has been authenticated. Now this is the email address, name, save, looking good. Anytime you're sending out emails, especially if you have a bigger list, always send a test email to yourself. So you can click here, preview and test and send a test email and then add an email address here. But notice how it doesn't let me add an email. We actually need to add a test list. So let's click on this one. And now I'm just gonna add another email here and save. So now these two will appear when I wanna send out a test email. So I'll go back here. Now let's take a look if it shows up. Now you probably need to refresh this then preview and test, test send test email. And from here, 
Now I have tips with punch here. So I'm going to select this one and send test. This is the email and notice the test here. We have here, we take a look. Notice how the email is now not from Brevo, but it's actually from a domain name that I authenticated. So we have here everything correctly. Hi, Rob. Yes, if I click on this, it takes you to YouTube. Great. Uh, looking good. And you get this Brevo logo here at the bottom because it's the free account. If you upgrade, it's going to disappear or you can actually disable it. Okay, good. That email looks good. So I can now close. I'm happy with the test. And now the last step is to uh, just schedule it. So I can click here. Uh, we can send it now, Sched schedule for later. So for example, here I can select, uh, oh, let's say Friday and the time, uh, this is uh, Amsterdam time. So I can select from here, let's say somewhere in the morning at 10, it would send it out this way. And you can schedule this way, uh, multiple emails. So you can uh, s sit once in a month, schedule all your emails in one go and that way you don't need to think about it. And then you also have the send at best time option. This is a really cool feature where Brevo will determine the best time to send emails based on past engagement data. But if you're new to Brevo, uh, it uses the data from other users to, to estimate optimal sending times. That said, Brevo recommends that you send a few campaigns before using this feature. Uh, this way it can learn about your subscribers behavior. So it's more personalized to your subscribers. But for now, uh, for test, I'm going to send it now. Uh, let's click on send now. And now you see it's scheduled, but actually it's sending it out as we speak. So if I start, keep refreshing this page, it should say running. There you go. So if I go to my email, you'll see that I received this email here. Uh, it's again the same email, but without the test. And that's how you know everything worked. Now you know how to send campaigns in Brevo. So the next step is to learn the most powerful feature of Brevo, and that's automation. They can be a little tricky when starting out. That's why you can avoid wasting time and making costly mistakes by watching this video right here, where I'll teach you uh, step by step how to use automations in Brevo.